Hey Scorpio, welcome to your tarot reading. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're doing good. I hope this reading finds you well. So as always, I'm going to invite you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me more than you know, and I appreciate it. So thank you in advance. And also, I'm recording this reading on the blue moon. So exciting, so fitting for the Scorpio energy. Um, I think it's a magical moment and this specific moon in the specific placement won't happen for the next 13 years, guys. So this is big. Uh, so yeah, happy blue moon. Release whatever needs to be released and, um, you know, let your intuition take over and be in the driver's seat today. So Let's go. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Let's see what is the general energy of this reading. Scorpio Sun, Moon Rising, Venus, North Node. However you connect with the Scorpio energy, you are welcome here, my friend. Okay. Scorpio. <clears throat> Scorpio. What is the general energy? Okay. Emperor at the bottom of the deck. Interesting. Let's see what we have here. The Queen of Wands. Am I surprised? No. Fitting for this blue moon energy. Fitting for a Scorpio. I feel like every reader has their own interpretation of the Queen of Wands and of any card, but for me, personally, the Queen of Wands is Scorpio. The fabulous witch of the tarot. And I know that some people are not necessarily comfortable with the word witch, wizard, all of that. Totally fine. This card invites you into trusting your own magic. It is shining a light on your own power. Remember how beautiful, magical, powerful you are. The Queen of Wands focus on her own magic. And I say her, but it's not about gender. This is an energy. So the mix of fire and water here is always, you know, showing me the image of a cauldron, something boiling, something simmering, something that you manifested, something that you're working on. It could be, you know, your personal journey, healing journey. It could be your magical journey, whatever it is. The energy is at work for you, but it really starts by you noticing your own magic. Um, this card can be very sensual. There's this power of attraction to the Queen of Wands. She gets what she manifests. So I don't know what you've been calling in. I don't know what you've been hoping for. It's going to be different for each and every one of you, but right away, the tarot is inviting you to trust. Don't forget how powerful you are. Okay, let's dive into this reading. I love it. I love that the Queen of Wands is your general energy. It makes me happy. Okay. Queen of Wands. What is this all about? And what do we need to know for Scorpio? Okay, two cards. By the way, I apologize, my voice is extra raspy today, but I'm doing great, so no worries. Um, I hope it's not annoying <laughs> to hear. I hope it's, it's still soothing. But yeah, my voice is very raspy today. So we have the hangman in the reverse, and we have the temperance card right away. Two major energies showing up. Hangman in the reverse kind of fits beautifully with temperance. Notice around the head here, the light shining around the head. So interesting that they look very similar. Honestly, I think I never notice how similar they look when the hangman is in the upright. So interesting. I love that. So getting clarity around something. Um, hangman is 
you know, in the upright, sometimes when we feel stuck on something, when we are ready to release, you know, this is connected to Pisces. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. There's this call to truly release um, what no longer serves us, what has been keeping us stuck in the same energy. It is uncomfortable. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be effortless. It's like, okay, spirit is acknowledging you've been in a weird energy for a while now, Scorpio. You could have fell stuck. But the temperance is kind of, you know, shining a light on the possibilities that are in the near future. You know, you can see the sun here in the background. There's this beautiful path here that leads to the sun. And it's like, hey, you are doing the work. You are releasing what needs to be released. You are already so far in your journey. Honor that. Celebrate that. Especially if you're having a bad day, if you're having a bad week. And your mind is saying, come on. Are you still thinking about this person? Are you still really struggling with the same old energy? Um... Yeah, you might be, and that's totally fine. Remember, Scorpio, that the brain is very, very loud, and the soul, the intuition, is a quiet, quiet whisper. Um, sometimes our intuition is going to be very loud. That happens sometimes. But when you hear, receive messages like that, like, Come on, why are you still obsessed with this? Why are you still this and that? This is not your soul. This is not your intuition. And it feels like your guides are trying to say, you're doing the right thing. You're doing the work. And it might be taking a long time. You know, it might be very slow. But just like the angel on the temperance card, we want to... Take our time, dip our toe into vulnerability, into the heavy feelings. Um, just the fact that you are noticing the feelings, just the fact that you sometimes open up and share about how you're doing, just your willingness to wish for more, to create magic in your life, to want better for yourself, it is bigger than you know. And it's something to celebrate. It's something that I always celebrate in other people. And I try very hard to honor in myself. Um, but this is big, Scorpio. And that's why I'm taking my time with the cards. Because this is, this is big. Um, there's this moment of clarity about to happen. And I'm sensing in the next three days <clears throat> after you watch this reading... There's going to be this clear moment of revelation. Something that you've been doing, a way that you've been receiving other people's energy. I think there's going to be this clear cut. And it could definitely be connected to the blue moon and Pisces, this magical moon. Which invites us again to release completely. It is like an extra push. Is there an X that you still think about but you know they're not good for you is there you know a job an energy something that you lost in the past that you're still grieving this moon is giving you the extra push the extra support to really let your intuition guide the way it's kind of it's giving us a break from the loud voice of the ego and the nervous system, you know, the brain. Okay, tell me more about this. Tell me more about this, Scorpio. <clears throat> we have the full, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm definitely not surprised with, you know, the major arcana that are coming through, so potent, so you know, specific, it seems like. So the fool is the soul of the tarot, infinite possibilities. And the fool is not foolish. Very important. 
This is, in my opinion, one of the biggest misconceptions in the tarot that the page are immature and foolish and that the fool is foolish. To me, it makes no sense. This is my way of, you know, reading the cards, um, but I honor everyone's perspective. So the fool is the soul. This is exactly what I've been saying. I don't know what you've been doing, but it seems like you've been finding a way that works for you. To notice when the brain is being too loud, when something is not your truth, when it comes from outside of yourself. Of course, we can consider, you know, invitations and we can consider other people's opinions sometimes. It's okay. But I think that right now the answers lie within you. And there is something that you are about to fully deconstruct, an idea, a belief about who you are, where you're supposed to go, how hard you're supposed to work, how you're supposed to love, what it means to be magical, what it means to be a witch, what it means to be an intuitive person. There is something that you're about to embrace is what I'm sensing. I like that. Um, to me, the fool is the moment before the leap of faith, because zero to me is, again, infinite possibilities. We don't know if I could press play here. I, you know, I don't know. Maybe the fool is just going to look at the scenery. Maybe he's going to take a break. Maybe he's going to jump. Maybe he's going to fly. We don't know. So to me, the fool is not the leap of faith. Again, it's the moment before the leap of faith, this moment where we embrace the fact that anything is possible, that there was never ground beneath us to begin with. Think about that, my friend. Receive that in any way that feels right for you. And we have the nine of wands here. So it's not easy to let the soul lead the way. It's not easy to surrender to our soul journey and say, this is what I want to do. This is not what I'm expected to do. This is not necessarily what I was taught to do. It's what I want. So the Nine of Wands sometimes is, you know, a contraction. This is the wounded warrior. I feel very connected to, you know, this, this name that a lot of people give to this card. You've been hurt in the past. You want to protect yourself and you are so close to releasing. It feels like the only wand that is missing is the one that the Queen of Wands is holding. And that makes me smile for a reason. I love that. Um, you have the power more than you know to cut cords with the past. And I feel like there is something again, that you're attached to, but I don't know if it's a person, if it's an ideal, again, an old belief. There's something here that you're about to completely let go of. And it's not just about saying, I'm done. I'm over this. No, it's about feeling it. Every part of your body is letting go of this thing that's been holding you back. This thing, this energy that has kept you from showing up in the world as your true, authentic self. Um, there's so much coming up right now. And I don't know if you noticed that, you know, the flame is dancing. Usually it's very still, but there's something here about that. It's like the energy is gaining momentum. There's something here. Um... I like that. Let me pick more cards. Um, I'm very into this energy. <laughs> and I feel like intuitively a lot of you can sense that a big change is coming. That whatever you're releasing is actually making space for newness. Okay. Tell me more. What is at the heart of this reading? What is the central energy? Okay. This one bounced. Look at that, my friend. Hierophant. 
Taurus energy, which is your opposite on the zodiac wheel. Um, I love that. I think that when an energy like that shows up, an opposite energy, I know that you guys are doing the shadow work. Actually, Scorpio is the master at shadow work. It's not easy to embrace the Scorpio energy. It can be painful, scary. The whole Scorpio journey is a trip into the underworld. And I know many of you understand that. Um, so here with the Hierophant, it seems like you are working, co collaborating, uh, aligned with your values, really. Allow, align, sorry, with what you value the most. This is what is at the heart of your world right now. All the Venusian themes, your body, your finances, the present moment, nature, love, pleasure, beauty, all the Venusian team, and again, beliefs. So the Hierophant is, it's everything, honestly. Maybe I'm biased because I'm a Taurus sun and I absolutely love this card, but this card comes in and bless every reading. There's this magical energy to it. In the storyline of the Major Arcana, this is the first time where you see other people. It is bigger than you. This journey is bigger than you. You might not be aware of how you impact other people, of how much your words matter. You know, here we have the blue scarf connecting to the throat chakra. There's always an invitation to speak up that there could be an important situation about to happen where you're going to need to speak up. It's going to be very important. And your brain is going to tell you, don't do it. Just settle for less. Don't, don't complain. Don't speak what's on your mind. Don't add to this. Just go with the flow. No, it is important that you speak up. And do it from love. Again, Venus energy. Taurus is ruled by the planet Venus. That's why I'm talking about Venusian theme. Do it from a place of love. Do it from good intention. But speak up. I feel like there is something that you might have kept for yourself. Something that you're not happy with. Something that maybe was uncomfortable. It could be someone that hurt you. Someone that... You know, just is not treating you the way you deserve to be treated. I don't know exactly what it is, but I feel like there is something that you need to say and address. Does it mean that the person is going to receive what you're saying with love? No, it's not because you show up from love that it's going to be received that way. We cannot control how other people perceive what we say. We can only control what we choose to do, how we choose to take action and what we choose to say in the moment. And then we have to surrender. As long as you know that your intentions are pure, the other person will receive it how they want. It is not yours to hold. Again, you do it from a place of love and respect. But again, there's something here that needs to be addressed. This is at the heart of your reading. So what is it? Is it at work? You feel maybe undervalued, unappreciated, underpaid. For some, it's going to be, you know, something that you have to say to your ex before releasing them. A friend, a family member, a neighbor. That could be it. It could be about anything. It doesn't have to be just about love. Not everything is always about love and romance and exes. You know, terror reflects real life. So love, it comes in many different forms. You know, Venusian themes. Uh, there's a whole spectrum of it. So there's something you have to say. And it feels like 
I know it's gonna be kind of rough the way I say it, but this is how it wants to come out. It's been eating you from the insides. And you ignored your truth because you did not want someone to receive it in a negative way. You didn't want to change in their eye. Didn't want to complain or be too much, ask for too much. Um, it will change your life in this moment to speak and address this situation. That's why there's so many major arcana because this is no joke. And we have the six of swords. So remember, swords are the brain, nervous system, how our ego sometimes, you know, creates stories about who we are, how we're supposed to be. You're letting go all of that. And the coolest thing about the Six of Swords is that the swords are not weighting down the boat. Swords are very freaking heavy. And there's like three people here. So there's kind of this magical energy here. I have been through so much and I carry with me the grief, sometimes with a capital G, sometimes with a small G. I carry the heartbreaks and the lessons and all of that, but it is not weighting me down. It is part of my story. It does not make me lesser than, and it does not take anything away from my magic. And you know, there's this huge misconception about spiritual workers, intuitive people, people who, you know, live a soul-led life, people who connect with spirit. There's this idea that we know everything, that we're not supposed to mess up because we're supposed to predict and we're supposed to be prepared for everything. And that is the biggest lie ever. Living a soul-led life choosing to embrace our magic it is about always living in the unknown it's about embracing the unknown it's about surrendering to the unknown and learning to just be learning to trust and i think that the swords here are all the tools that you build for yourself the tools that you accumulated throughout the years so whatever happens, a challenge, a heartbreak, a tower moment, you have the tools to get through it. You have the intelligence and the logic required to get through any hardship. And that, it's not magic. It's you. It's the work that you've done. It's your willingness to keep your head up through all the ups and downs, you know? So I think there's an important message here. And again, I'm taking my time with this reading because I, I feel it's very important and someone needed to hear it. So you're not supposed to know. When you choose to speak up, you're not supposed to know how the other person is going to react. You're supposed to honor this calling. This is how you step in your power. And look at that. Tower is at the bottom of the deck because, you know, we've been talking about her. So, of course, she's showing up. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned the tower, so it usually does that. Ace of Pentacles is here. So, you are creating this new beginning in your life. Again, it's not because of your magic. It's because of your logic, your intellect, your willingness to do better, to grow. And it's easy to say, okay, step into your power. Come on, step into your power. How do I do that? You do that by showing up. You do that by honoring what feels right in the moment by honoring your truth, by speaking up and focusing on the things that you have control over. And we don't have a lot of control in this life. Everyone knows that. What do you have control over? Nothing. 
You know, we don't control the weather, we don't control other people, we don't control energies really, but we have control over our own action. And I can guarantee you there's a situation, Scorpio, that's going to be a little uncomfortable, but it's going to end up being the biggest and best gift that you can offer yourself. It is freeing you. Remember, hangman reversed. It is shining a light on some type of truth. And it's creating a new beginning. One that is rooted in the truth. Kind of finding your, your true purpose, honoring your true purpose. This is me. I am magical, powerful, sensual, magnetic, and no one can take that away from me. And maybe in the past you felt like people took away from your magic, took away from your freedom, took away from, you know, your soul in some way, your true essence. Not anymore. Because again, not only you learn so many lessons, but you are putting the lessons into action. And sometimes we need a little check-in around our values. Sometimes we need to go back, you know, to our old writings. This is something I do all the time. I go back to my old diary, to my agenda, my tarot pulls and everything. And I am always amazed. Wow. Okay. I have learned this lessons. I know this. But I forgot. I needed a little check-in. I needed a reminder of my own power, my own magic. Look at that. The emperor is here. It wanted to come through. It was at the bottom of, of the deck earlier, so it's here again. I love it. You know, when we talk about stepping into our power, the first thing that comes to mind for me is, is the emperor. This is a new beginning. It fits beautifully with the Ace of Pentacles because it is connected to the sign of Aries. Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. It is the baby of the Zodiac. It is the sense of the self. So this is me. Look at me. This is what I believe in. Take it or leave it. You know? If you cannot see me, accept me for who I am, I don't need you in my life. You know? All the fours in the tarot are connected to boundaries in some way. And I think that not only you are very clear with your boundaries, you are embodying them. And it's protecting you from a lot of bullshit, let's just be honest. So, again, I don't know how you will individually, each and every one of you, step into your power. And I feel, again, like it's happening in the next three days. But you're going to do it and it's going to change your life. And I am not saying this lightly, Scorpio. Look at all the major cards. If you know tarot a little bit, you already know. So there's something here again about the self, you, who you are, what it means. What do you want? What is your goal? What is your purpose? And there's this... I want to say tunnel vision, but guys, I am French, so I'm not even sure if like it's the good way to express what I'm sensing. My eyes are closed right now, and what I'm seeing is the high priestess, and she is, you know, in between the two pillars, and she is focused on her own tunnel, you know, the tunnel vision, which I know sometimes I think can be a negative thing, but it's not negative here. It's powerful. Keep me focused on my own journey. Keep me focused on my own paper. When someone is able to stay focused like that, to not compare, to not judge, to not envy other people, it's because they are truly walking the path of the soul journey. 
when other people are critiquing you, judging you, you know, whatever they're doing, it just confirms that they're not focused on their own journey. They're too busy focusing on yours, but not you. Again, tunnel vision in a good way. If anyone in the comments want to, wants to share a better way for me to express that, I am always open. Again, I'm French and <laughs> I, all, I am always open to make mistakes and I'm more than happy when someone corrects me because I love to learn more about you know the language and get more comfortable expressing myself but there's something here again the boundaries the vision here the high priestess protected by the pillar i'm focused on my own magic and no one is going to dim my light ever again look <laughs> maybe that's what i was seeing look at that the two pillars here and in the, you know in the center there's magic celebration i love that again fours in the tarot are all about boundaries in my opinion in in many different form so four of wands is the 11 11 card as i you know love to call it to me this is always a good omen this is always a good sign from our guides saying this is it to me as a reader, it's a confirmation that someone needed to hear some of the message in the reading today, which I'm not done with, by the way. And this is a card of celebration. You know, what brings joy in your life? How are you channeling joy and magic? And again, look, the, the pillars here are kind of protecting the people in the middle. So it makes so much sense. You are protected. So trust, surrender, say the thing that you need to say, do the things that you keep putting off because of fear, because you feel like you're not good enough, like it's not worth it. What is the most important thing for you right now? What do you value the most? Think about it. And if, when I ask you this, you go right away to a place of wanting to please your parents, please your partner, please your friends, please society. You still have work to do, which is totally fine. What do you want? You know? Okay, let me take the Hermetic Tarot and I want to see if there's any message, clear message that we need to receive. This reading was like a roller coaster ride to me, personally. Very vague messages, but I think it needed to reach the most people possible. So I'm honoring it. And I am, again, welcoming any input, any suggestion, or, you know, just if there's something you want to share in the comments, I would be very happy to know how you receive this. The Three of Cups is here. So this is another confirmation from our guides. This is the invisible family. And as I picked this, 3333 on the clock, guys. No joke. I have it on my ring, 333. This is my favorite energy when I read for other people and for myself. Three of Cups is our guides, our invisible family, the beloved dead, saying... Trust what comes next, even if you don't know what it is. It's exactly what's supposed to happen. Big, big change ahead for you, Scorpio. Um, magical changes. And again, what have you been manifesting? Because this is what's showing up. Is it love for you? Is it abundance? Is it, you know... A transformation of your body, your mind, your soul, whatever it is, that's personal to you. Have a clear vision, clear intentions, because what you're wishing for, what you're manifesting is on the way, my friend. And when it's here, it's going to be a crazy ride in the best way possible, but it's going to be intense. So... Get ready for it, my friend. 
get ready to co-create, get ready to be seen in all your magic, in all your power, because I do feel like there's this receptivity here. I'm saying that because the Four of Wands is Venus and Aries, which to me is the perfect balanced energy in the tarot. Nothing is perfect in life, but this card is very close from perfect. It's the Emperor and the Empress, the feminine and masculine working together. It is the perfect alchemy. And here in the Temperance card, we are still learning, you know, to be the alchemist. We're still making mistakes um, and trying our best to you know, slowly but surely trying new things. And here, the alchemy is mastered in a way. So you are becoming slowly but surely a master at something. And with the Hierophant here at the heart of this reading, as I said, it's bigger than you. Will you eventually teach other people? Will you eventually inspire other people? Yes, yes, yes. And we have the debt card. I'm going to pick Oracle cards before uh, I end this reading, but this is the last tarot card. So are you surprised? Look at all the major cards that came through. This is so special. We have your opposite here, the Taurus energy. And we have you, the dead card is Scorpio energy, the master at transforming. And the dead card to me, you know, child of the great transformers. This is how this card is called in the Hermetic version. So the way I see the dead card, which again, everyone has their own way of reading and I honor that. I don't think there's right or wrong in the tarot. I think that the important way to go you know the best way to go is to trust <laughs> it's to trust what comes through so to me the debt card is not an ending it's actually the moment before a new beginning a little bit like the fool but the debt card is like what has been transforming on the compost pile something that's been you know changing Again, compost transforming is the best way I can explain this energy. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to people. And sometimes they're like, wow, this is, it makes so much sense. What you believe was over is not over. It is actually on the compost pile transforming. And it will come back as an ace of pentacles, the ultimate seed the opportunity to flourish. And again, it comes from your willingness to walk the path of the shadow, you know, do the shadow work and embrace all parts of yourself instead of diminishing yourself, instead of judging yourself and where you are in your journey. And again, I think it's all connected to your own magic. Queen of Wands is very important here. Um, again, something is on the compost pile transforming. Here I said something is boiling, simmering in the cauldron of the witch, of the Queen of Wands. It smells good. It's, it's inviting. It's magical. We don't really know when it's going to be ready, but we know intuitively that something is about to be ready for us. We know that something big is on the way. And I know you sense this Ace of Pentacles. I know intuitively, Scorpios are incredibly intuitive um, and receptive. And I think that you know intuitively that a big shift is coming, a big gift from the universe. And all you have to do, which is easier said than done, is to trust to surrender, learning how to just be. And again, using the sword of your intellect, of your logic, to cut through the bullshit, to cut the excess, what has been taking away from your power and your magic. So 
Let me pick a moon card here. Nothing will come out of this situation. Void, of course, moon. So interesting. This card, honestly, never comes out. I think I picked this card one time ever. This is crazy. So this is a special reading. This could have been for someone very specific. I hope it finds you well. When I see this card, again, I have this calling to surrender. I know that I should not be attached to something that is over. So nothing will come out of the situation. It could be coming up as a support for you. Maybe you're seeing something like this big mountain that you have to climb, like this big challenge. But when you surrender and when you say, you know what, this is not my mountain to climb. This is not my place to fight. It's not mine to hold. I'm releasing it. I think that this card takes um, complete sense. And again, just surrendering to nothingness, to what we have no idea is about to show up. And knowing that we have the tools to deal with it when it shows up. So that was a big one, Scorpio. Uh, usually I do like 20 minutes readings on YouTube. I'm honoring what wanted to come through today. Please let me know if this was your reading. And again, if this is not your reading, don't take it personally. Um, this is all coming from a place of love. I am a Scorpio rising. I love Scorpios. I feel like there's not enough Scorpios in the world. I feel like you guys are definitely misunderstood and everyone needs the magic of a Scorpio in their life that I believe so I'm sending love happy blue moon let your magic shine and um yeah let me know in the comments how you're doing you know you can join me on patreon the links are always down below and I'm sending love bye